Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna to show you how to boost your FPS in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the multiplayer version. I did a guide for the campaign. Now you just want to max your FPS with the best visibility that you can have. So we're gonna to start to optimize Windows and after that we will go in the game settings. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're gonna search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, display mode, I really recommend to go full, uh, full screen exclusive. Add some weird stuttering in Borderlands, so super important to go exclusive. Make sure that you have the proper monitor. Make sure that you have your graphic card. A lot of people are playing with a laptop computer and you're not supposed to see your integrated GPU over there. If you have a dedicated GPU, super important to seeing it. 
your refresh rate also make sure that it's matching your monitor by default the game was at 60 for me and i have a 170 hertz screen so super important to change that make sure that you're playing native resolution of your monitor so if you have a 2k monitor go with 2k if you have a 1080p monitor go with 1080p don't use the dynamic resolution you don't want that you don't want like the blurriness that it will create so put this at off uh, V-Sync, I'm not a huge fan of it. It adds input lag when you're playing a, mo a multiplayer game like this. Make sure that it's deactivated. If you have G-Sync and uh, FreeSync technology on your GPU and monitor, you will be fine, so you don't need that. If you don't have those technologies, it's a question of preference. Do you prefer to add input lag or you prefer to remove those tiering, uh, or those horizontal tiering when you're playing the game? So question of preference. For the frame rate, if you want to use your FreeSync and G-Sync, you will have to... Make sure that you're staying in the range. So, for an example, if you have a 170 hertz monitor, make sure that you lock your FPS at 168, something like that. Uh, so, you're going to stay in your uh, free sync range or G sync range. If you don't really care, just unlock your FPS and you will have a lot of FPS in this game. And uh, if you're playing on a laptop with bad thermals or even a desktop with bad thermals, don't go crazy with your fps because after a certain amount of time you will start lagging because your pro processor or your gpu you will start throttling because of the thermals so don't do don't go too crazy with that uh so for example if you have a 60 hertz screen lock your fps for example at 60 just to make sure that you don't generate too much heat in your computer uh after that brightness it's okay focus mode make sure that it's at off and don't use hdr you don't want to use that when you're playing a multiplayer game so after that render resolution, make sure that you at 100. It's a bit weird when you're launching the game uh, on two of my computer. It was at 33, so you don't want to use that. Really important to use 100 to make sure that you're playing the same resolution that you choose. For the upscaling and sharpening, you have a lot of different options over there. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of those. Uh, it decreases your image quality. You don't want to use that. Except if you need FPS. So if you're playing like a, with a 4K monitor or you don't have a lot of FPS and you have the NVIDIA, the LSS, the LSS is kind of good. You can definitely using it. But if you have a proper amount of FPS, don't use those technology. Uh, the other one that you can use, it's the Fidelity FX. It's some kind of like sharp sharpening that you can add on your game. It can be good uh, if you feel the game a little bit blurry. So you can definitely add that. And last resort, if you don't have an RTX card, you can definitely use the image uh, scaling over there from NVIDIA. Um, it's not very good, but it's better to play the game at 20 FPS. So, question of preference. I also hope that they're going to update the FSR 1.0 because right now, uh, Radian AMD just released the 2.0 and it's a lot better. So, probably in future patches. After that, anti-aliasing, I recommend to go with the minimum T2X. I really like, I really hope that they're gonna add like another option to just remove anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing in this game, for me, it's really trash. Uh, everything looks blurry. So go with low with the quality. And for the video memory scale, make sure that you're blocking it at 85%. You want to to, to let your video card at 15% empty on your VRAM uh, because you're running, you know, Windows. Maybe you have a second screen and stuff like that. Texture resolution, just use at your VRAM. So if you can go high, just go high. Make sure that you match your anisotropic with the resolution. So if you're, uh, you are high here, select high. If you're going normal, go normal over there. If you're going low or very low, go low with the filter anisotropic over there. And it will not affect your FPS. It's just a question of VRAM. Uh, after that, Nerby level of detail, I recommend to go with low. You will gain a nice 3% boost in your FPS over there. Distant level of detail, go with low. Another 4% boost over here. Clutter draw distance, go with short. You can expect a 2% boost over there. Particle quality and particle quality level, go minimum. You will not necessarily see a big improvement in your FPS, but when you're fighting, if you're getting some crazy drop, it's probably because of the particle quality. So super important to go low and very low. Bullet impact and spray, not a huge impact on your FPS, and I really like to see where I'm shooting, so that's why I activate this one. Shader quality, majority of the people can run medium. Uh, if you have just a decent car, like a 1070, you can definitely go with high, not a huge impact. If you're playing on an integrate GPU, go with medium or even low. Tessellation, again, uh, not a huge impact on your GPU. So if you have like a just a normal GPU, you can definitely go near. If you're playing on a 
very old radian like uh, i don't know like um 70 uh 57 50 something like that close your desolation radian back in the days had a lot of issue with desolation so make sure this one is at off terran memory i recommend to go with minimum on demand texture streaming go with on streaming quality you can go with normal volumetric quality this one will provide you a lot of fps so i to low you can expect a nice nine percent boost in your fps i also recommend to differ phys physical quality and water caustic put those one at off after that shadow and lighting those one will provide you a lot of fps the first one very low to extra if i compare them it's like 16 percent difference so definitely go with very low screen space shadow at off another three percent over there spot cache and spot shadow quality i recommend to go with medium uh, you want to use them particle lighting definitely go with low it's a little bit the same thing that i was talking about about the uh, particle over there i think it was there yeah particle quality level and um it's huge impact when you're playing the game and you when you're fighting explosion and stuff like that uh when you're playing multiplayer you don't want to use that so go with low ambient occlusion super important to go with off you will have a nice six percent boost in your fps but your visibility will be a lot better the game will look a little bit flat but you know it's the <laughs> you're playing multiplayer so you really want that uh screen space reflection go with off another like four percent boost over there static reflection quality go with low and weather grid volume go with low for the post-processing effect i recommend to go with nvidia reflex low latency if you have this technology very good so go with on depth of field motion blur weapon and world you want to remove that for visibility you will not gain any fps and your film grain should be at zero for the view Field of view is a question of preference, but you need to remember that more you will have field of view, less FPS that you will have because you need to render more in front of you. So if you're playing like a, with a very like limited resources PC, start with 80, look at your FPS. Uh, if you have proper FPS, you can definitely go higher, but test your field of view be before going crazy and put it at maximum. So this is pretty much it. In interface, I also recommend to... Um, activate your telemetry over there i right now i'm using all on because i want to monitor if i have some kind of like latency if i have packet loss problem maybe fps problem uh gpu time the, the amount of vram that i'm using when i'm playing the game etc so super important to monitor what you're currently doing in the game so this is pretty much it guys if you have any question just comment in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel peace